Okay, right, we're going to be talking about the end of the debate. What debate is that? Is the debate if there's God or not? Is there a God or isn't there? Uh, when an atheist asks for evidence, the question becomes, what evidence are you looking for? And also, is evidence uh, warranted? And why do I say the latter or ask the latter? Because if you are referring to the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible in the very first verse of the Bible, the very first declaration, uh, states that God is without what we call real or reality or and or evidentiary. It says that in the beginning, the beginning of what? Of everything you know as and don't know of what reality is. In the beginning of time and space. See? So that if everything you are able to grasp, to see, to analyze, to test, right, is within time and space, then the very first verse of the Bible written by cavemen, right, people who didn't know or understand anything, right? The very first verse of the Bible tells you that you're, you are wrong, totally wrong in your expectation. You cannot be asking for evidence or make, saying something like uh, that God is or isn't real. Because, and you can say that God isn't real, but that doesn't mean that he isn't. See, that he isn't and meaning that he is not. Not real or anything, just that he is. You know, you got to follow me because the problem here is that when you're talking about God, you're talking about an entity that will use the word existing, okay, or exists. But tr but we can't really use that uh, correctly because all of exist existence is everything God created. See, the Genesis one verse one. Uh, defines what uh, who, what God is. It defines that in terms of time and space. It, it, it defines him in terms of what we call real and what we know of as existing. And it clearly states that before everything that you and, me, and I call existing and real, right, before that, God was and is still. So he is outside of anything that you can identify as, as existing or real. So there's no, you know, the, the constant asking for proof, it just shows that people don't understand uh, the, the essence and nature, the nature of God would be outside of anything that you could possibly p point a finger at to say that that's proof or evidence. Just simply anything that would be proof of God is outside of your capacity to recognize it as such. So then what, what you know, God can be giving us all the proof possible and we still wouldn't be able to um, to recognize it simply because it is foreign to our existence. So if something is foreign to our existence, foreign to physical the physical universe, how is it that you're going to uh, uh, you know be able to identify and uh, quantify or qualify a proof the proof thereof? You can't. So if you're using that, you're using the definition uh, that anything that does not exist in time and space isn't. That's what you're saying.
it's not is is a a, a a what you call a fantasy it's something that's made up but the first verse of the bible tells you that if there is a creator if you are looking if you are accepting listen okay give us proof that god created the heavens and earth if that's what the question you're asking then you are automatically you're automatically asking for the wrong thing because simply it 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 the first verse of the bible tells you that that's not possible right because he created everything that you could possibly identify as proof or evidence of anything but if there was proof or evidence it automatically becomes something that was created see it wouldn't be god so simply, God cannot exist in what we call existence and reality. He cannot, because then he wouldn't be God. Nothing that exists would be truly God, right? That's it. That's what you have to understand. You, you And that's where all your questions are based on. Your, your questions are based on, you know, if there, if if this is the God or that's the God or whatever, they are within the construct of the universe. So really, you're saying that the universe is on top of God. the The universe encapsulates God, For, and 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 in that version and that idea, of course, there would be proof, but not if God created the universe created everything there is even multiverses if that's something you guys are cre uh, believing in or looking for scientific evidence of god would be far above all those things and outside of them not encapsulated within so i think that you know the honest atheist and also the intelligent atheist because the majority of you are not that's why you don't understand and, and you deny and refuse to accept what I'm talking about. Because if you were intelligent, you would at least reason that if God created the heavens and the earth, he would be outside of those things. Just like when we create something, you or I, we are outside of whatever we create. We're not inside of that. And we're not, you know, we're not asking what was created to prove it's creator. It's ridiculous. See? So, again, if you're an intelligent, you at least, intelligent atheist would at least recognize that if there is a God, he would not be evidenced by things within the created universe. And therefore, we, as human beings, limited to this universe, limited in knowledge, even within this universe, because we don't know everything yet about the universe, and realizing that if we did know every square inch of this universe and, and understood everything about this universe inside and out, well, inside, <laughs> then we will realize that you still would not find God, because that is not the path to God. You're still looking at creation, the things that God made. And that is what you have to understand. So what is left? What is left is exactly what the Bible says. It's interesting that the Bible has the answer. It's incredible. The first uh, verse of the Bible tells you that God is outside of anything you could uh, expect to be proven or to be evidenced. He is, in fact, not real based on the fact that our reality and the things we call real are within the universe. The universe itself as a structure and everything inside of it is what we call real and reality. Anything outside of it, if there is something, we would not be able to say that it is real. You would not recognize it as real. So he's beyond that. And, uh, and so you would have to understand, you would be a, a person that understands that that cannot be the question. 
And the Bible knows that, it knows that, or else somebody understood that cavemen, you know, I keep saying this thing about cavemen because I see many atheists say these were dumb people. They were ancient people. They were cavemen, you know, writing stories. I keep saying, but yet this story surpasses the knowledge of most atheists because they're unable to grasp this concept. <laughs> cavemen, give it to the cavemen. Cavemen, yeah, hey, good. Okay, so anyway, um, but the Bible does answer the question, what, how do we know God? How can one know God? And the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why is it impossible to please God? Because there's no other way to know him. It is the only way to open the door transverse the universe, if you will, and open yourself to something that's beyond. And it's only through faith that that is possible. Now, you say, oh, I tried having faith. I was I had faith. It's like, no, 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 no. There's a very definite meaning to faith. And it's not what most people understand as faith. So please understand something. I'm not going to go into that now. But please understand that most of the people I've, I've talked to and we've debated on subjects, atheists in particular, and, and Christians, are, Christians are not in agreement 100% uh, on different things. And this is one of them. One of them is what the meaning of faith is. And it's unfortunate. I know, you know, you guys went to Sunday school. You had your different teachings. Uh, this, this type of teaching, that type of te teaching whatever it was in Pusamera. And I'm sorry that you guys experienced that uh, in your upbringing, uh, but just simply um, the fact is that the Bible gives its own definition of what faith is. And I suggest that you all listen, if you're going to deal with God and this issue about God, at least follow what the Bible says about certain subjects that are important. And the, as you know, the most important thing is about is faith in this question, is, is there a God or isn't there? So read up what faith is. And understand, if you're intelligent, intelligent atheist, because you need intelligence here, realize what it says, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1 1 gives you the definition of faith. Now, Hebrews 11.1, 1, and compare that, its implication, with Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. And then you will realize because you will see the relationship with faith within the construct of reality. And what exactly is it is it telling us that faith does? And there are many other verses in the Bible that, that say faith, that use the word faith, do a word search. And, you know, and apply the understanding because... I mean, you, you weren't taught well, and this is the reason there's so many uh, debates going on and, and confusion, but most of it stems from ignorance of Scripture because the Scripture does say clearly. What I'm talking about here is scriptural. It's based on Scripture plus brain power. See, with Scripture alone without using your brain, you can come up with thousands of stories that don't work. At the end of the day, you know, you conclude, hey, you know, this is just a, a fairy tale. <laughs> You're right, you know. The the way you look at it and the way you're understanding it, it is a fairy tale. I agree with you. The what you're thinking about is a fairy tale. Okay? Well, we're not debating that the, you, the concept you have of God is a fairy tale. I agree with you. But that's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying something that's not a fairy tale it's it's very it's reasoned and it's very clear okay the problem is that most people don't use their brains when they're reading the Bible they don't understand how God speaks and and I said oh the, now we have to have a special understanding yes 
Of course. Because if we were talking about things that are in our universe, you would have use your normal academic reasoning. But we're talking about God, aren't we? Are we talking about the guy who created the heavens and the earth, the universe? So then that that's a different thing. See? That's a different type of thinking. So how do we get that thinking, Reverend Rosado? Well, you read the Bible from Genesis 1. Reason the Bible from Genesis 1. And... In, amazingly, these cavemen, I don't know what got into them, but these cavemen placed in the first verses of the scripture and developed a line of reasoning that is perfectly um, capable, adapted, purposed, designed, if you will, to give you the proper framework within which when you apply your faith and you use your brain, you can figure it out for yourself, right? The scriptures do declare the glory of God. They declare the truth of God, but you have to have a brain. And it's, it, 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 you know, it's, it's really intellectually dishonest for people to just approach the Bible every which way, you know, and the excuse is, you know, and it looks stupid. You guys, you get together, look, you guys look like drunks on, on a street corner. And of course, you're right. You're right. You got your pals there, you know, <laughs> that's just a story. <laughs> Let's drink some more. And then you're just laughing amongst yourself. You know, that look, it looks totally silly. There's no intellectual honesty there at all. You guys are just fooling yourself. You're playing a game. You're wasting your life and wasting your time. The question about God is a serious one. Is there or isn't there? Now, the Bible states the qualification, the qualifiers for is there a God. And up to this date, I've seen no, not one atheist deal with the qualifiers as stipulated, as presented, as declared in the Bible for the existence of God. Not one of y'all. You, all you guys are doing is asking dumb Christians, and I'll tell you, I, I'm a Christian. You're asking dummies out there, because they are. You know, you got young Christians you have Christians that go to the churches that you guys went to and, you, and look at you. You're an atheist today. So what does that say about that church? You know, it's a game. You guys are fooling yourselves, asking other people who don't understand. They're in the wrong churches in the first place because they don't learn anything. But they're just self-pleasing themselves, saying that they're going to heaven, that we're worshiping God, you know. And they're not really searching in the scripture and understanding the scripture right so you get these dumb answers left and right all the time and then you feel better about yourself you say you see these christians can't answer these questions ha ha ha, ha. i must be right and unfortunately you're you are not right because the only atheist an atheist that thinks you know couldn't be given the scientific data that there's already that we have developed so far, and given the declaration of Genesis 1-1, there can be no intelligent atheist because they would be at least agnostic. If they were smart and honest, they would be agnostic, not an atheist, because there's simply not enough information. Um, you have to realize that the universe will not provide you with the information you seek because you don't have the capacity for it. You have not the capacity for it. And the only way, and I don't mean that in a personal, you know, IQ level reason. I'm talking about by nature, by your nature, by our nature, we do not have the capacity to evaluate God. We just don't, okay? So the, the issue becomes, if the, according to the Bible, what does the Bible say is the pathway to know if there's a God or not. And that is by having faith. And faith is not just making something up. 
faith is 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 it's faith is an is a process if you look at hebrews 11 1 you realize that faith is a process okay that makes real if you will a the relationship a relationship and knowing that god is and that's what 11 uh, faith does okay faith reconnects man to that surety that man once had in the garden of eden when adam and eve were there before they sinned against god and cut that off that was cut off and so it only can be restored to a degree uh, through the process look at it as a chemical process a it's a relational process. It was just like in science, it, it, it is processional, it's procedural, okay? Called faith. And and that's that. And I can't help you if you if you insist if you do not admit your your level, your your capacity for understanding deep things is limited. That is does not prove your limitations of understanding does not is not proof that God doesn't exist. Simply. It's not and you shouldn't convince yourself God doesn't exist. God doesn't exist because there's no proof, there's no evidence. You know, and and the sad part of it is that you're affirming half of the things I'm saying. That's the sad thing about it. <laughs> you are right, but yet so far from the truth. And that's the sad part.